Hello chemistry students, in this video we're going to look at the different gas laws, we're going to look at the different equations and formulas, we're going to practice calculations and practice how to use these different formulas. As a recap, this first formula represents Boyle's law, pressure times volume equals pressure times volume. Okay, they are inversely proportional provided that temperature and number of moles of gas remains constant. Remember, volume can be in any unit as long as both sides, both volumes, have the same unit. Pressure can also be in any unit as long as both pressures have the same unit. Then we've got the combined gas law. P1 times V1 divided by T1, where T1 is temperature, T2 is temperature, and it's measured in Kelvin. And in this case, when we use the combined gas law, N number of moles is constant. Then you get the ideal gas equation, PV equals NRT. Now, this is a very, very important thing to note. Very specific units need to be used for this formula. So you cannot use pressure in any of the units that you choose. It has to be in Pascals. And one of the most obvious or the most common ones that you'll get is you will get your pressure given to you in kilopascals. So just remember, one kilopascal is 1,000 pascals. Volume must be in cubic meters. We will speak about how to convert volume to cubic meters when that pops up. Moles is N, number of moles. And often you have to calculate N by first using another formula such as this one. R is the molar gas constant. It's always going to be 8,31. And this is given on your formula sheet. And temperature must be in Kelvin. I have done a video already in this playlist where I go over the different variables and gas laws and how to convert from one variable to the next. An especially important one that learners often get wrong is the volume conversion. I show you how to do these conversions properly. So if you want to look at that video, I'll link it in the description box below. I also remind you how to convert between different units for temperature. In our first question over here, we've got something that says where the balloons are sent into space to gather data. The balloons usually burst at a pressure of 27,640 pascals and a volume of 36,3 cubic meters. The data collector then falls back to Earth. So what they're doing in this question is they setting up a scenario where they're giving me pressure information and volume information. They even give me a little picture. Then they carry on by saying the gas in a certain weather balloon has an initial volume of 12,6 meters cubed, so another volume, and a pressure of 105,000 pascals, another pressure at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. Now they're giving me temperature data when it's released into space. If you carefully look at this question, they give me two pressures, two volumes, one temperature. This scenario over here is speaking about the conditions under which the balloon will burst. That's when it'll fall back to Earth. This scenario over here is giving me an initial reading of pressure and volume and temperature. Let's read the question. Calculate the temperature of gas in degrees Celsius, read that very carefully, in the balloon when it bursts. Now remember we said this first bit of information here was all about when it bursts. They gave me a pressure, they gave me a volume, but no temperature. And if you read further, they gave me a second scenario, which is actually our initial scenario, where they gave me a pr pressure reading, temperature reading, and a volume reading. So we've got P, V, and T for my initial scenario. We've got P, V, and we want temperature for my burst scenario. So think about what formula makes most sense to use in this case. If you assess the three formulae that we already looked at, I think that the combined gas law makes the most sense because it's got P, V, and T, and it's got two scenarios over here. So this would be, for example, the initial readings that they gave us, and this over here would be the readings when the balloon bursts. So when answering this question, the first thing that I need to do is I need to write my formula down, which I've done over here. Then on the left hand side, I'm going to write all the data that corresponds to the initial scenario, which is everything that I've highlighted in yellow, and I'm going to substitute it in. Just remember that for the combined gas law equation, temperature must be in Kelvin. And how do we convert from degrees Celsius to Kelvin? You will remember that we add 273. 
that gives me a temperature of 298 Kelvin, which I'll be substituting into my initial side of the formula, along with my initial pressure and my initial volume. Then on the other side of the formula, I'm going to substitute in everything that happens when the balloon bursts. All they've given me is pressure and volume for when the balloon bursts. I don't know the temperature, but that's exactly what I'm looking for. Now what you need to do is you need to solve this. So how we do that is you first work out this little piece on your calculator. And I get this answer over here. Now what I'm looking for is T2. I'm going to finish the question on this side over here. I've run out of space. What we need to do now is we need to isolate T2. T2 is my variable. If your variable or your unknown is at the bottom of the fraction, how you can solve for it is it needs to swap places with whatever is on this side of the equation. You're going to get something that looks like this. Type that whole thing in on your calculator and your final answer is 225,99617. Don't round off. Remember, this unit, the unit for temperature here is Kelvin. How do I know that? Because when I substituted temperature in here, it had to be in Kelvin, which means T2, the answer is going to be in Kelvin. But the question clearly stated that they wanted the temperature in degrees Celsius. So remember to convert from Kelvin or from degree Celsius to Kelvin, we add 273. To go backwards from Kelvin to degree Celsius, we need to minus 273. So we do the opposite. So therefore, to get my temperature in degree Celsius, you take your answer that you got here, don't round off, minus 273, and your final answer is negative 47 and it's comma zero zero something like that but i'm rounding it off to two decimal places so degrees celsius there we go that is my temperature so this is four marks you get a mark for your formula always you get substitution marks for either side of the equation and you get a final answer mark so if you forget to convert back to degrees celsius you do not get your final answer mark you need to read the question carefully the next question wants the initial amount of gas in moles in the balloon. Now, as soon as you see moles, or if you see mass or something like that, your mind needs to go to the following formula. This one over here, because the ideal gas equation is the only one that has N in it. So you get a mark for writing your formula first. Remember to write your formula as is on the formula sheet. It's a small p, so don't do that, okay? You might get your formula mark deducted if you do that. Then we're looking for N. You need to substitute everything else in. They say the initial amount of gas. So we need to use the initial conditions. So here's the initial volume. And remember I told you when you use this formula, your volume has to be in cubic meters. Okay, your pressure has to be in pascals. Your temperature has to be in Kelvin. So my pressure is in the correct unit, 105 zero 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 my volume is in the correct unit 12 comma 6 equals n is what i'm looking for r is a constant 8 comma 3 1 and temperature must be in kelvin we already converted it earlier by adding 273 we get 298 remember you're plus 273 and then you solve for n so what you do is you multiply these two together first and divide it by the product of these two and round it off to two decimals, we get 534,25 mole. In this question, they're giving me an unknown gas. We don't know what the gas is. And what that implies is that we don't know what the molar mass of the gas is. And the question is actually calculate the molar mass. Okay, so unknown gas, they give me the mass in grams. So we know baby M is 0, 0,77 grams. They give me the volume that it occupies, but they give it to me in cubic decimeters. Okay, just keep that in mind. 0, 0,32 cubic decimeters. They give me the temperature, but again, keep in mind the units. It's in degrees Celsius, and they give me the pressure in 96 kilopascals. And they say, assume that the gas behaves as an ideal gas, which is hinting at the fact that we need to use the ideal gas equation, which is PV equals nrt the other hint that we have to use that formula is because they want the molar mass of the gas now remember what i mentioned earlier in this video in order to get molar mass we need moles we're going to eventually use this formula right so our end goal is to use this formula to calculate molar mass of the gas that is that variable over there but in order to use this formula we first need number of moles 
to get number of moles, we're going to use the following formula. Now remember, this is the special formula where all your variables have to be in the correct unit. So we have to do some converting in this question. So first things first, pressure must be in pascals. They've given it to me in kilopascals. Remember, one kilopascal is equal to 1,000 pascals. It's like one kilogram. So kilopascal, kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. Okay, so similar sort of conversion. So in other words, we need to multiply by a thousand. That means that there will be 96,000 pascals of pressure. Okay, we've converted pressure. The next one to convert is volume, and this is one that learners often struggle with. There's a quick way to know how to convert volume. You just memorize it, and that is that 1,000 cubic decimeters is equal to one cubic meter so how do you get from cubic decimeters to cubic meters you will need to divide by a thousand so you can learn these conversions off by heart you can learn to get from cubic decimeters to cubic meters you divide by a thousand or if you forget that in the test you can always work it out remember i taught you in the in the units and variables video King Henry died of a mighty disease called measles. This is millimeters, centimeters, decimeters, meters, deca and hectare we don't use, and kilometers. We need to convert from decimeters to meters. Every jump this way, one jump is times 10. Okay, this way, one jump is divide by 10. But we're not going from cubic from decimeters to meters we're going from cubic decimeters to cubic meters so we can't divide by 10 we need to divide by 10 to the power of 3 which is the same thing as dividing by a thousand which i just showed you so to go from cubic decimeters to cubic meters we need to divide by a thousand and that gets us 0, 0,32 times 10 to the negative 3, or your calculator might say 3.2 times 10 to the negative 4, which is basically the same thing as 0, 0,00032 cubic meters. So we have to convert to cubic meters. I know it's annoying, but you have to. Then we must convert from degrees Celsius to Kelvin. Remember, we add 273, so we get 300 Kelvin. Now that we've converted all of our units properly, there we go, there's the correct conversions. Now we can substitute into my formula. So you write your blank formula first, you get a mark for doing that, then you substitute in your variables. So in the place of pressure, we put 96,000. In the place of volume, we put 0, 0,32 times 10 to the negative 3. N is what I'm looking for, R is 8,31, and temperature is 300. Now you might say, ma'am, I'm not looking for N. Remember, we need to find N first in order to then use this formula afterwards. Okay, so how do we solve for N? We need to multiply these two together and divide it by the product of these two. I get N as 0, 0,01232225. Do not round this off yet. This actually carries on. I'm keeping it on my calculator. This is not the end of the question. We're not allowed to round off. Now we're going to use the next formula. In the place of n, I'm going to substitute that. So just like that, I'm looking for big M. Remember, I have little m. I have the mass. 0, 0,77 grams. I'm looking for big M. Remember, we discussed if what you are looking for is at the bottom of the fraction. It swaps places with this when you solve. So big M is equal to 0, 0,77 divided by this number. And I get 62,4 eight seven which runs off to 62,49 grams per mole you may not run off in the middle of the question so if you didn't you should have gotten that answer i hope that this video has been helpful please remember to check out my other gas videos and stoichiometry videos linked in the description box below comment to see you in another video very soon bye everyone